There's a reason people call it free Adderall. Free tents, free drugs, free money, free medical care, free reign. What began as a sympathetic and civilized agenda has exploded into a crisis. All over Seattle are signs of misfortune and tragedy. And despite a lot of the money and platitudes, the catastrophe here is only getting worse. So on a chilly day in late October, I drove all over the city to see the extent of it all. The goal was to check out Seattle's newest plan, a series of tiny temporary villages that the city thinks will help alleviate the number of people on its streets. And along the way, I got just a small glimpse into how bad things in Seattle have become. A big part of the problem here is drugs and mental illness. While the cost of livings put hundreds, if not thousands, of Seattleites out of their homes, it's the city's policy on drug use and law enforcement that really has made the problem here so bad. The city tolerates drug abuse and even encourages it. Police officers complain they can't enforce drug laws or property crimes. It's a broken system here and residents are fed up. A lot of people feel the city caters to its growing homeless population and even encourages more of this through its lax policies. At this point, it's hard to tell if Seattle's the infection or the host. And because of all of this, property crimes in Seattle are the highest they've ever been. Smashed windows, stolen cars, stolen bikes, home robberies, muggings, vandalism, arson, rapes, assaults. It's appalling. Of all major U.S. cities, only San Francisco has more property crimes. For all the same reasons. The city removes encampments all over the city, but all that does is spread people around into parks and playgrounds, onto sidewalks, into nice neighborhoods, onto hillsides, on access roads and under bridges. It's awful and it's sad. There's limited shelters here and many of the people here don't want to be in shelters. Sometimes shelters can make the problem worse. I mean in some Seattle shelters they supply heroin and even show residents how to safely inject the drug. What the hell? It's estimated there's 12,000 people living on the streets in Greater Seattle. This year alone, Seattle's spending $120 million to combat homelessness. And one of the big plans the city has are a series of tiny villages. So that's what we're going to do. Seattle has a list of all the new villages that are springing up where it aims to house its growing homeless population. I'm skeptical of the plan. I mean, all the little villages we're going to see are only going to be able to house a small fraction of the homeless here. And based on conversations I've had with residents in other cities with a homeless crisis, what makes more sense might be solving the drug and mental illness problem, so you wouldn't need as many homes. But alas, I'm not directing the policies here, nor am I a Seattle resident. Let's begin our journey to see Seattle's grand plan to solve its homeless emergency. On our way to Rosie's Village, first established permanent little mini village in the city of Seattle. Here it is. Here's one right here. Turn left, then your destination will be on the left. Right in the middle of downtown, or not downtown, but there's a little village right here. Rosie's. Your destination is on the left. So here's one right here. We're in a little area north of town. And inside this fence is... It's fenced in. So they're protected. more. Okay, right now we're going down to an area that's east of downtown. It's called Seven Hills Park and traditionally there's a lot of homeless tents, unauthorized camping going. So this is Seven Hills Park. This is not supposed to be allowed, but it is a thing. And we're right in the middle of a neighborhood. 
Kind of a nice neighborhood too. Some nice homes. And right here in this old park is a homeless camp. Now you moved to Seattle recently and you've got some perspective on, um, you know, the Los Angeles homeless scene. I know you were homeless for a while. Um, so you have a unique insight into the Seattle homeless situation. Yeah. Um, I, I just wanted to kind of ask you, you know, if you could kind of give people an idea on like what's happening with the homeless problem in Seattle right now. Yeah, so actually this is my second stint in Seattle. And so I lived here in 2018 for a year and it's you started to see some of the effects of the policies and just like, you know, same stuff that's been happening in every city for like the last 10 years. Um, but now that I came back, it's uh, like you said, it's not as bad, but it's because they, they know where to hide now, and especially during the winter. Um, where they've moved is to, the, is to the parks. So this is a, that's a big problem. And all these like really nice well-to-do neighborhoods in Seattle, that's where they are. And it's because they're very upset. So I will give this to the Seattle homeless. They're making a statement. They're moving into the neighborhoods. They're moving into the parks to say, F you, we are tired of this. You treat us like shit. You don't care about us. So they're just, that's, that's kind of like a little bit different than what's happening in LA. Cause LA, they control them. You know, they tell them, you don't come here. You can stay in Venice. You can stay in uh, downtown. You can, you know, but in Seattle, it's free for all, man. Uh, heroin's still a big deal up here as well. That never really left the area. Uh, there's, you know, I go to libraries frequently here cause I travel around and do filming. So uh, there's needle dispensaries. As soon as you walk into the front lobby of a library, it's a little concerning. They're in the bathrooms. They're everywhere here, dude. So heroin is still a really big problem here. Apparently we're coming up on another one of these little teeny villages. This one's called North Lake Village. And it's only a mile from the first one. Kind of under a bridge an industrial part of town some of these used to be temporary and then somebody donated the land so that these people could live you can see it's right here there's another one it looks like the, uh, the first one we saw we've got just maybe 20 or 30 little houses behind a fence right in the middle of some kind of an industrial area I think they used to camp here and then the city got them to donate the land please help us move we need a new location look at you can see there's a shower in there in the back like a little common shower and uh, that's sort of what they're trying to do I think there's probably 30 no there's not even 30 I'd say 20 in there but I mean how many of these can you build to house the thousands of people in this city All right, we're gonna go to the next one now there's another, there's a, sorry, I'm just going to keep talking because there's a lot to talk about. There's a, this really pissed me off too, because I came up here to, to, to help the homeless situation as well. And I wanted to get involved with the orga organization called We Heart Seattle. And they're strictly an, uh, a volunteer organization. <clears throat> they don't get paid by anyone. They strictly do this out of the kindness of their heart. So about two or three weeks ago, the, the governor, or not the governor, the mayor of the city, uh, issued them a cease and desist order to say, hey, sorry, you can't help the homeless anymore. Don't, please don't go pick up trash anymore. Please don't um, give them clothes. They've held 68 people get off the street. They're not allowed to do that anymore because of uh, they're disruptive. Can you please tell me how volunteers that don't get paid, have no contract with the city, out of the kindness of hearts, are being disruptive to the society? I That blows my mind, too. So. I mean, there's an argument that, I mean, I've heard a lot of people say it's a money grab, like the city makes money or profits on the homeless problem or somehow benefits by encouraging homelessness and drug use. And I, 
is that is that true? It, why would they do that? Is that true? Like, how would that work? Like, is there a reason the city it, would it, want it, to have? Yeah, no, this, I've heard this in LA too, and in LA you can prove that because um, of all the like the that Triple H policy they they passed. The, there's there's paperwork that actually proves that they're trying that they're making money off in LA. Seattle's a little different. Um, I, it's a little hard to quantify why they're doing this. I mean, I know why because they just they they want to, <laughs> they don't care about you and they just um, they're trying. It seems like they're like just trying to destroy the city. I, I swear, that's just what it seems like. It just seems like they just want to make the city as crappy as possible and um, just ruin the infrastructure and just it's just it's, it's, to me. I think it's just easier for them to just say. Um, it's kind of like San Francisco here, dude, where they literally let them, like they can do drugs here. They don't get busted for stealing. They don't, you know, they can pretty much live wherever they want. Um, so again, that's just seems to be the liberal theme is to just further degrade society in that way and not help these people and further. I mean, they'll give them drugs. They'll give them, like you said in your in your um, San Francisco, your tenderloin thing. Same same crap here. They give them drugs. They give them needles. They give them their needles. So I mean, they're not helping the the problem. Obviously, they're perpetuating it. So. It's very, very confusing. Yeah. And they actually show them how to um, take the drugs. Do drugs. Yeah. yeah. Here's how you, here's how you inject yeah. it. Uh, here's drugs one on one. Yeah. Yeah. So this is Lake Union Village. It's pretty much downtown. It's kind of the same thing we saw before. Just. Thirty or forty little mini places right here. I'm doing like a documentary on this whole thing that's going on. This is great. Can I? Is there a way I can like talk to anybody or? Uh, I'm the manager. Can I sit down with you for a couple of minutes and do a quick little interview? Um, you need to talk to Josh Castle or. Uh, I called him and he didn't call. He was gonna call me. He didn't call me back. Inner Bay. Yeah. There's like a brand new one going on, and he said that there's like twenty or. 20 of these so far and there's like 30 each that's like 600 people yeah how many how many total is this does seattle have that they're trying to house oh i think i have nine 900 no nine uh nine villages no i mean like oh. 600 will that make a dent i guess that's the question yeah it, yeah what's your name nick nick what Johnson. Johnson. Thank you. All right, so he wasn't going to let me in there. And he didn't want to talk because they've got people that officially speak on behalf of the place. But again, another little village right in the middle of downtown. I guess, I mean, if you lived here, I don't know how you'd feel about it. Um, you know, if you lived in some of these fancy buildings, if they're if they behave and they're good, I guess you don't mind. It's better to have them in there, maybe. But how much that spills out into the streets, I don't think the neighbors are probably too happy about it. I should talk to them. They're on the west side of town, over by the where the football Your team plays. Your destination will be on the right. It's called. Inter Bay Village. And it's over by where the football team and the soccer team play. On the west end of town. I think there's another one up here. can actually drive right up into there's no gate here we go so you can see there's maybe 30 little small houses right here oh there's more there's these here and then there's a bunch over here so it looks like there's 30 or 40 small units here 
just enough for a bed and a table for these people to live in. Maybe somebody will let us look inside. So we're inside. These are these little units. That they're putting in. Well, this would be a little village. Everyone's going to be staying. Moneymakers is, is old people's homes right now. They're, they're trying to build them as fast as they can, right? The baby, right. baby yeah. boomer generation. Retirement homes. Right. So that's who I see here. Older people. I see old, infirm. I worked 20 years on a roofer. I fell through a skylight, you know, shit like that. That's what I see here. So it's not like well, the junkies that you see on the street that will be here. There's an element of that uh, there, but you know, what makes a junkie, you know? Who is a junkie? Yeah. Right here, there's one right here. I'm a junkie, mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, that when they show on the TV some fucking skeleton, and that's not the truth. It's uh, everybody. Just average people. Anybody, wherever is one step away. Anyway. <laughs> can I can I show inside how big it is? Yeah, it's nice, huh? Yeah. Not bad. Just enough for a bed and a table. That's all you need, right? You got a bed, table, heater, uh, 20 amp circuit. Yeah. Um, the shower trailers are pretty nice. Or the all there. Those are pretty nice. Yeah, and nobody, they don't have to pay to live here or they have a small rent they pay, it's free. Okay. And then on the roof, they, they, they get, they get taken care of very well when they get here. Um, it's, it's supposed to be a transition. It's supposed to try to get them to where they need to go. Yeah. That's what they're trying to do. Right. Safe place to be, you know, 24 hour surveillance you know, by the people that live there. Yeah. Is it getting worse because of the cost of living? Do you see more and more people, like more and more needs? Well, when they, when when they did the when the COVID hit, there was like a panic, like you could feel it. I mean, it, I mean, you feel it everywhere, but on the street, it was really serious. Mm -hmm. And things really changed around here. Things that had never been here before are now you know, here. I mean, you never saw like street walkers like you used to. I mean, like, like there is now. Okay, so we just learned that there's, they're estimating there's between a thousand and two thousand people that really need the most help. And they've built 20 of these and each one has 30, so that's 500. So it is making a dent in getting people off the streets. And he also said that a lot of the people that end up in places like this aren't necessarily your traditional addicts, but Sometimes it's old people that don't have anywhere to go, seniors that are disabled, um, and they're really trying here. And this thing's gonna be opened up, he said, by Christmas. So like that's like two months, there's gonna be about 30 more people living in here. And if they follow the rules, they get to stay for free for as long as they want. He also said that a lot of the homeless people come to Seattle and don't get the job that they wanted and the high cost of living makes it tough and they end up on the streets and one thing leads to another and there you go. So Seattle is making an attempt here to get their people off the streets. This one over here has actually been up and running here, he said, for about six months. There's a lot of people inside of there that are living their lives with warmth and heat and shelter. 
All right, we're gonna go to another one now. And we're gonna see what's going on, but I have a feeling they're all gonna pretty much look the same. But this is just some random lot that's just maybe two miles from downtown. It's been converted into a tiny home village. And here's the other one that's been up and running for a while now. Looks like they're safe and sound inside their little community. Need to get the trash people out here. All villagers, please check in with security as you walk in the gate. Please introduce yourself, name, house number. No visitors are allowed. I think they got a laundry over there. Like a little common area. Well, good for them. These people need to be part of a community. Maybe it'll help them. All right, well, so we're right by the airport here. On the other side is the village we just visited. And then three blocks away, again, more of this permanent, temporary, look, no parking, <laughs> okay. But man, you see RVs and motorhomes all over. This guy's pulling a boat. <laughs> Just and you can tell these, these people have been here for a long time. There's more of them over here. Oh my God, it goes all the way around the block. This isn't even on the map. And this is clearly not new. Look at this. Like, to me, this does not look like uh, I lost my job recently and I'm temporarily homeless. This looks like a lifetime decision. Intentional. I'm gonna get a crappy RV and park it in Seattle. Where's the... There should be like a homeless person. Oh, there's even more over there. There should be like a homeless person heat map where they can all share insights into where the best streets are to park where you won't get harassed. Maybe they have that. It's like you turn a corner and there's just, there'll be like 50 RVs just parked somewhere that you would never suspect. I mean, we were right by the airport. This is crazy. Okay, so we're on our way to the next camp and there is just a row of RVs and homeless encampments or whatever you would call this this thing goes for like an entire block right here just on the southeast kind of in a really bad neighborhood part of town I don't understand who decides that's okay I don't know if somebody parks there and somebody else parks there but they've clearly clearly been there for a while because there's debris and cobwebs and stuff underneath all the RVs. Wow, that is like a lot of people. There were probably 50 people living on that one block. I mean, entire giant RVs, like the Winnebago's just parked there, who knows for how long. I don't know if those are the same people that are gonna end up in some of these villages or if they don't want to live in a village. I'm sure there's a little bit of both. 
I think you're a lot more independent outside of the village. I'm sure there's rules you have to follow if you live inside one of these little villages. But wow, that was a lot of people. And we're literally probably three miles from downtown on the southeast side of town. So I get the fact that the, the the city would be motivated to make the city bad, the leaders, because that's a liberal thing, like create dependency and then profit off of that. Um, but the fact that they would shut down agencies that are just trying to help um, just doesn't make sense. I mean, if you go to like a city, Seattle City Council meeting and you, you watch the recordings of it, you see everybody's all pissed off. You know, the cops feel like they're frustrated. The city won't let them enforce the law, like yeah. you said. Um, good luck calling the Seattle Police Department on a naked man. There's about five more naked men that they have to respond to that day. So yeah. there's nothing yeah. that they can do. Um, is is Seattle's homelessness at a point that there's like no return now? I mean, is there a, is there like a thing that they're going to do? Like, oh, we, you know, if the city's like, hey, we have a plan. Everybody relax. We, we're going to figure this out. Then I think people would be like, okay, let's see what the plan is. Is there a plan? Actually, I think they just so I think we just got a new mayor and he's Republican. So he's going to come in here and kick some butt, he says. So that's what he ran at, ran on is that uh, when he gets in there, he's really going to have uh, social workers and everybody. I think he's going to let the police do their job and they're going to come around and say, hey, you know, here's some services. Here's uh, here's your options. But your option is to no longer stay on the street. So apparently that's what I'm hearing that the plan is, is that this mayor is going to come in and really clean it, clean it up. If he actually does it, we'll see, because we know how politics work. Uh some the left will come in with some sort of uh you know human human rights activists will come in and say something like oh you're violating their rights even though they're leaving their trash everywhere and there's needles everywhere and they completely don't belong in the parks but somebody will fight it but uh, so that's the plan up here that they have i hope that they actually uh, go through with it and this mayor actually does um back up what he says but other than that if he doesn't no nah, there's no plan they're just it's just gonna get worse and worse and worse right close to downtown is another one of these little villages just in the middle of a neighborhood which is just crazy you can't really see or get in there either all these are walled in and it looks to be like there's 30 or 40 right here true hope village So you can so you can clearly see they're doing a lot of gentrification down here around where all these camps are like what's going to happen are they going to build around these teeny villages and just let them be in the middle of all this new construction i don't know but you try to throw these people out and see what happens. I doubt they're gonna move the villages. I look up ahead, there's like a camper, an RV. I wonder if they're looking for a spot to park because I'm gonna bet that they're not on vacation. Although they do have a surfboard on top and it says Illinois, so maybe they are. They kind of blend in though. Who knows? Okay, right now we're in an area called Rainier Beach. If you're from Seattle or the area, you know this area well. You probably haven't actually come down here very often. This is considered the ghetto of Seattle. Now, for those of you that live in an actual ghetto or know what an actual ghetto looks like, you're gonna be like, this is Seattle's ghetto? yes apparently so yeah so okay so i drove around and i saw a, there were about 20 teeny villages all over seattle and i went to as many as i could find there was anywhere between 20 and 50 little small homes i don't know if you've seen those um around town in different areas and i think at count there's like a thousand total little teeny homes scattered throughout seattle now they've got a They've got 15,000 people on the streets in Seattle. Is the goal to build a teeny home for everybody? Is that part of what they're trying to do? 
I don't see how they're going to do that. There's where's where they're going to. I mean, I haven't seen these tiny homes. So are they under the bridges or the freeways or where are they? Um, they're scattered throughout. So like uh, there's a map. The city of Seattle has a map um, that I can actually show a link to where they've got like a different uh, a list of all the little teeny villages. And a lot of the land was either donated or they bought the land, you know, small little four or five acre plots where they've gone in and put little teeny homes in little makeshift villages look like little smurf villages um Interesting. and they're all over the city and there's plans to build more um i i, I just can't imagine that they're going to build number one can they build enough of these to support all the people and number two it's just going to incentivize more people to want to i mean if you're like hey they'll build you a little house and who's going to have the motivation to get their life in order if they just everybody gets a free home well, if you advertise that, absolutely. And that's a big reason why people do come up to Seattle, because you get free drugs, free houses, free food, free clothes. You don't have to do anything. You really don't. So I would say they would probably want to build more house, tiny houses because that's more money coming to them. That's more people they get to hire. That's the more scheme that keeps to keep, that gets to keep going. Um, also, where they're living in, though, um, especially now that it's starting to rain a lot, they, there's, they live underground. There are tunnels that they live in. Um, um, freeway overpasses are big too. RVs, RVs are the big thing here. I see RVs uh, all over the place, especially in Georgetown, Ballard. Dude, there's a guy in Ballard that has an RV. This I, I crap you not, dude. This is on the news. This guy has an RV parked on the side of the road, uh, and he's building a second story on top of it, out of wood, just just straight up on the side of the street, building a second story on top of his RV. And it made the news, and this guy's just like, oh, you know, I, I got carpentry experience, so I just felt like building a second uh, floor on my RV. And the neighbors are freaking out because, like, what if something happens? What if this guy, what if the, the, the roof caves in or something? Like, something could happen. What if it falls over on us? Like, but nobody's doing anything. This guy's literally got a two story RV in Ballard. So, I mean, people get really creative where they go. I mean, people. I mean, if you live in this area, people are really good at like being woodsy. You know, they know how to beat the rain. They know how to put tarps over their stuff. They know how to build like, you know, build you, get those wood pallets and get yourself off the ground, all that stuff, you know. So a lot of good campers up here. So, you know, if you're homeless up here, you know how to do it. Uh, they know where to hide. They know where to go. So they go do their heroin and they go pass out for a couple of days and then you see them again. <laughs> leaning, yeah. leaning, leaning in the middle of the street somewhere. Okay, so the area we're at right now is actually right next to King County International Airport. And we're headed towards a place called Georgetown Village, which is another one of these little teeny communities way down here. I mean, there's a lot more room down here. You'd think that this would be a spot where they'd put a lot of these old things, but most of them seem to be closer to downtown. Okay, so here we go again. This is called Georgetown Village. And clearly a lot of people have vehicles because there are a lot of cars parked outside. We got a BLM sign out there. And it looks to be pretty similar to a lot of the other places that we've seen so far. She's clearly about to begin her day at one o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, unless she doesn't live there. You're not supposed to have visitors in there. We just caught somebody sneaking out. These all look the same though. This one's a little bit more beat up. Maybe it's a little older than some of those other newer ones we saw closer to downtown. But it's in a really weird area. This is like, well, this is actually the airport. So right next door to the airport, which is very convenient if you are a frequent flyer. You could just pretty much walk right onto your plane. But yep, T how two little villagers probably it looks like there's about 30 units behind that fence. This one has barbed wire on it. They they really do want to keep people out or in. Just little units. So we're gonna do, there's two more on the south side. We're gonna check those out. Of course, we can't see every single homeless camp because, you know, they pop up all over the place. 
you know, they come and go as they please in what's clearly a bad part of town. And I'm not saying graffiti means place is a bad part of town, but I am saying a lot of graffiti is a bad part of town. So right now we're going to another one of those emphasis spots where there's been notorious tents and homeless stuff set up all over. I can see it off in the distance, but it's like a really big circle because they just move around. They set tents up and then they take them down and then people move and they come and go. So you don't know exactly where they are, but there are a lot of them supposedly in this part of town. I could actually see them from the road, but I don't know how to get down to them. We're gonna try to see if we can find them. So I think there's a bunch of homeless people down in this ravine somewhere, but I ain't getting paid good enough, well enough to go down there and find them. You go down and find them. They're down there. I think they just live in the woods. I would say that it's kind of like LA where they make policies. Oh, here's where the, here's how they make money in LA is they hire all the contractors and all the people to do the planning to do the housing, but they never actually do it because then some like bureaucratic red tape pop. Like people donate to this. Is, this kind of makes sense. Like the people that make that donate to like either private organizations or even to the government never really gets back to the homeless people. It all goes to the politicians. So that's why they have like this little system that they developed to where all the politicians are getting rich and the homeless stay homeless. Yeah. So, raise money to solve homelessness and then use a exactly. lot of the money to pass Just like charities. the election. Just like charities. Yeah. You know how charities yeah. always get accused of like 90% of the money gets allocated to the people actually running the charity and only 10% goes to same thing. That's how they make their money. So they run it like a charity. Yeah, no, I get you. I agree. I mean, I, I tried to get some nonprofits when I was in San Francisco to kind of talk to me about the issue. And they all said they didn't want to talk to me. And then the more I dug in deep, I saw some of them had because 40 they people don't, on staff. They want to tell you. They don't want to tell you what they're really doing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to an area that the city has drawn a map around as being an area where there's notoriously a lot of homeless people but your destination is on the left I don't think it's there anymore used to be kind of you can even see that there's like a big area oh wait there's some over here All right, now we're on the south side of town, not really far south, but south of downtown, and which is a really bad area. And right here is another camp. This is one that the city calls an emphasis camp, meaning I think they circle it on a map as being an area of interest and concern. Perhaps they're going to come back one day and address it or just monitor the situation or try to keep an eye on these folks. This has like been a hot spot for camping for a while now and it's kind of at the base of like there's the baseball field where the Mariners play and then it's in between where the Seahawks and Sounders play there's big stadiums right here right here in the parking lot of where all the sports teams in town play you can imagine the, the stuff that goes on in there people have to walk back and forth to the games it goes all back through there underneath that bridge. And you know that they're not camping out for Seahawks tickets. I'll tell you that. It's funny that you, you mentioned the thing in Seattle with the guy in the RV that's building his own structure. In Portland, there, there was, um, they're actually laying cement um, on plots of dirt where there'd be some tents and all of a sudden there's a structure and then they go back like two days later and there's cement poured and they're starting to build are you serious wow yeah and then they have to go in i mean it's one thing to tear out tents and and tell people get out of here but it's another thing to rip out 
<laughs> rebar and wood structures and like it's just a free for all up there man you know what i'm saying though i mean it's just like people are fed up people are just they don't care anymore they know they can get away with it there's no cops nobody's going to come and say you know sorry you can't stay here so welcome to america now dude like seriously like this this mm -hmm. is america now driving around downtown you don't really see a lot of homeless people um, in big camps like you do in Los Angeles and Portland. Now Seattle does have um, some camps that are borderline regulated. The city kind of allowed Turn them to left anyway. take over some of the sidewalk areas, I guess anything between the curb and the sidewalk and an area where people are supposed to be unloading. The city kind of like let them have that spot for a while and now apparently they're taking their streets back and they're pushing people out of the downtown area. Um, there's an area downtown that they have not pushed them out of that we'll go see in a little bit. But for the most part, they're sending them out uh, into bridges. Um, or they're moving out into areas that are out under bridges, into fields, kind of away from the city center, or they're going into some of these temporary or somewhat permanent little teeny villages. So you don't see large numbers of people in big groups downtown. You'll see people sleeping in doorways and there are tents downtown, but it's not crazy out of control like I guess it was previously. Okay, the next one we're going to is pretty much downtown. It's called Lake Union Village. And I think it's down like a an alley, sort of. So right here, you can see another one. Right in the middle of a little community, they've fenced off, there's probably 30 little teeny homes that the homeless people can live in and they have a gate apparently it's protected they got it made by the way Seattle's Chinatown is ghetto Ghetto, ghetto, ghetto. Poor Chinese people have to deal with all this crap. There's graffiti everywhere. It's bad. Homeless people do not come to Chinatown when you go to Seattle. Just don't even do it. Look, they like broke turn all the right windows. Turn right onto 10th Avenue South, then turn left onto South Weller Street. It's like broken windows and graffiti and bombs. That sucks. Okay, we're coming up on it now. It's called um, Second Chance Camp. Some people call it Myers Camp. It's way down here on the border of White Center and South Park. And this is going to be the last, the last one. Now the city has like 10 on their website, 11, and supposedly there's like 10 other ones here, but I don't know where they all are, but here you go. Here's the final one listed on the city's teeny village list where they're trying to help people get back on their feet with some sort of temporary slash permanent housing solutions and no alcohol allowed let's talk to this guy <clears throat> what's up man i'm doing a documentary on the tiny village solution you know about that is there any way i can like just do a little like recording or talk to anybody or just do like a quick little two minute thing um let me go grab the camp manager okay uh, you'll be able to show you yeah. that. Alright, thanks man.
All right, so <clears throat> he's gonna get the camp manager. What I'm trying to do is basically just ask a couple questions is all. Um, I was just going to say, no, uh, is there a solution that's, if that's what you're going to ask? No, there's not. Unless, uh, kind of like what we said, like you just are literally going to have to go around and start forcing people to get off the street. Here's your options. You can, well, uh, we'll kick you out of the state and go to the state somewhere else. Or here's your option. Just get into a drug rehab program. Get into, you know, uh, we'll put you back in school. Educate these people. Give these people work skills. Uh, I hear there's a labor shortage. Here, here there's a bunch of homeless people. Wow, let's. How about we can uh, give them some work and you know put them back and and, and get them back on their feet and response uh, have respect for themselves by going to work and actually earning their money instead of you know the government just handing it to them. So that that's how I would solve it: put them back to work. But yeah, that's some different ways, but yeah, a lot of cities spend a lot of the budget on trying to um, build affordable housing for their population instead of addressing the underlying issue, which is drug addiction and mental illness. And um, it's almost like you would think they would devote all their resources to get these people clean and sober and smart and motivated again, and then help transition them into the real world so that they don't have to build a house for everybody instead of just sticking them in a place. And then they go out and they're free to continue to use drugs and continue to create problems and steal. And they have a home to go to, a safe spot that they can then go back to. So you don't really stop the problem. You just spread it around and, and put a Band-Aid on it instead of actually like, yeah. solving it. You know? So let's think of it this way. Why? So let's think of it this way. If you were able to live for free, do your drugs, do whatever the hell you wanted without anybody telling you anything to do, why would you vote for the other party? Right? So... To me, I think the Democrats want this because that's a voter base. That's just more voters that come in, especially that's why they're allowing a bunch of illegal immigrants to come in here. Because guess what? When you hand them free money, give them free food, give them free housing, why would you bite the hand that feeds you? And they know that. It's just all psychology. It's all political. They know this. So I think it's just a political ploy to keep. Well, that's why they keep rising. That's, uh, that's why the inflation and uh, the uh, housing Rising, the rising housing costs are hand in hand right now. Is you're going to see more and more normal people out on the street. So you're going to see two classes of people here pretty soon. You're going to see the the haves and the have-nots, and the have-nots are going to far outnumber the haves, obviously. So it's just that 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 wealth transfer that's going on right now. There's just a major societal shift. Um, I really pray and hope that next year's going to be better, but it, I don't know. It's uh, from all the news that I see. It's, and the more people I see, dude, every day, every day, there's new people every day showing up on the street every day. I, 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 I go, I go to Georgetown a lot and I see a new, new RV every day. Um, they, I try to talk to them up here. They're not as friendly. Um, I think it, that is that Seattle freeze thing that happens. Um, they kind of just go, no, nah, it's, it's, what's this? Seattle's actually rated the most depressing city. And the people are the most depressed here. I don't know why I think it's gorgeous up here. I think depression is uh, kind of like a, a, a mindset that you allow yourself to have. You can choose to be depressed or not. That's just how I think. But um, a lot of people just want to be left alone. And that's fine. You know, there's a lot of trauma that they deal with. There's a lot of inner turmoil. A lot of, you know, people like, you know, are broken. There's a lot, you know, especially around this time of the holidays. Holiday, holiday times are the worst for homeless people. It really, it really is because they're not with their families and a lot of bad things happened around that time. So it's unfortunate. So you, so you talk to the people in Seattle that are homeless and you're trying to help as much as you can in the time you have. Um, is there a theme among the Seattle homeless versus the homeless in Los Angeles or other areas? Like, is there a difference in the type of population or the mentality among Seattle? Yeah, that's a good question, actually. So LA is kind of a little more like, uh, so LA is a little more like kind of um, it's a lifestyle choice. Like you literally had people from all over the world coming out there to live. You know, oh, I can live on Venice Beach and not you know just live in a tent, and do whatever I want. Awesome. Um, there's still that like kind of Hollywood thing where like everyone's got like a persona and like everyone's got like a little gig that they're doing and they're so important. Up here in Seattle, it's like these are like you know people don't talk about that stuff. They're, like, these are like local people that grew up from in seattle or around seattle tacoma or down the road so this is their home this is you know their family's close so it hits a little harder for them they're not transients they're from here so 
it's kind of like a little more of a living nightmare for them every day because they're reminded of the past, you know, and they see it. Their, their parents are, could be an hour away, 20 minutes away, who knows, you know? So, uh, and like I said, the heroin thing that really messes people up here too. Um, that'll heroin compared to meth is very different. If I had to choose and I don't want to choose either, but if I had to choose, I'd deal with a heroin addict because they just kind of zonk out and do their thing. You know, they, you know, you don't really have to deal with them all that much other than when they kind of wake up and they don't know where they're going. But meth heads are the worst, dude, because they're up constantly and they turn into zombies, dude. Like you cannot like they they're out of their minds. and Don't deal with meth heads are the worst. So I guess like that, that's kind of going. It's a little more compassionate up here, I guess. Ellie's a freak. Ellie's brutal, dude. You know that like Skid Row is just like an animal. Just oh, my God. Skid Row is the worst. Um so there's nothing I like that. There's no skid row up here. There's no like, you know, Venice Beach where it's just out of control tents everywhere. It's a little more spread out. But Seattle's kind of like, you know, a little, as you know, it's a smaller city, the downtowns. Oh, here's, here's the problem. Okay. Here's the difference between LA and Seattle. I think it's a lot more violent up here. Look, I, right. I, I, that's a little weird to say that it's a little more violent in LA. LA's the homeless. They kind of just like keep it amongst themselves. But here's the problem in Seattle. They attack. They attack the public. Like a lady got uh, sexually assaulted here two months ago by a by a homeless guy that was off his rocker in the woman's bathroom and she was pregnant in the courtroom. Like this is ridiculous. So um, there's just a lot of oh man. It's just like there's no there's no laws here. So these people just come up here and there's a lot of oh, Washington is one of the least, least educated states. So there's just a lot of degeneration that keeps perpetuating here and it's a vicious cycle. And that's why it's a, it's a local problem here more than a, a national problem like in LA where everybody comes. This is a, a more localized problem in Seattle. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But is word on the street? What's the, what's the, um, the hope or the optimism um, that that Seattle homeless problem and the drug use and the crime and all that will get back down to where it was before the spike. Like, are people optimistic that that's ever going to happen again? Is Seattle ever going to be the same? No, everybody knows that. There's this guy named Sean Reynolds who has a channel called Summit Properties, and he talks about it all the time up here too. And um, even he's he's like a really optimistic guy, but he's just been kind of like, I don't see a solution here that like, you know, people are really like, you know, I, this is the first time they've voted for a Republican mayor, I think 30 years or something like a long, long time. So I think that's the first step you're going to see. But um, as far as the homeless, uh, they kind of just. That's no, I, I oh God, I wish I had such good news, but I don't like I'm just I got to be real. Just, no, they don't have any hope that they're ever going to get off the street or that. The government's going to do anything to help them because they have the history to prove it. The government keeps crapping on them. I mean, how do you how do you tell an organization that's completely volunteer that has nothing to do out of the kindness of their hearts to just stop helping the homeless? Just uh, don't pick up their trash. Don't don't get them off the streets. Don't even go around them. Cease and desist order. You are not allowed to do this anymore. That that that's just the epitome of what Seattle's the leadership is all about, right there. They don't care, and 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 the homeless people know that. So. Why would you have hope if you know that you're not cared for? So. That's it. Our homeless tour of the West Coast. We saw Vegas, the Central Valley, Oakland, San Francisco, Portland, and Seattle. The whole West Coast is a mess right now. And what you just saw was probably the most complete look at the current state of the disastrous homeless issue here in Seattle, Washington. And I hardly showed you any of it. There's pockets all over this place with trash and encampments and vandalism. They need to take charge here and clean this city up or Seattle might fall like other large cities in the country have fallen. Can Seattle be saved? We're about to find out. Doesn't have to be that big to be a home. I need a home. I take anything that was given to me. A home. I need a home. You're all right, but I'm living nearby inside an RV. You're at home and I'm out here and I'm just really sorry. I just want a place that's a home to me, a home. We just need a place that's home. A home. A home. A home, a home is all. 
all need somewhere that we can be alone from cold. I need a home. We should all guarantee we have a place to be. We need, we need a home. Now you're alright, but I'm living nearby inside an RV. You're at home and I'm out here and I'm just really sorry. I just want a place that's a home to me, a home. We just need a place that's home. Hey everyone. So it's pretty clear by now that elected leaders aren't gonna help you. If you don't like what you saw in this video, demanding change won't work. You're gonna have to do it on your own. If you wanna be safe and want your community to be a place where people wanna live, you're gonna to have to clean the place up yourselves. You're gonna to have to work with your friends and neighbors to lower crime. Politicians clearly don't care as much anymore. It's up to us. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production. And are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting, that's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation.